Hi everyone, it's Tarek. And Stella from Beeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Trekking Through History, a game designed by Charlie Bink and published by Underdog Game. Let's get to the game! In Trekking Through History, players are time-travelling tourists, going back through time to experience as much history as they can. Over three days of play, players will choose their historical events, and use them to fill their itineraries with point scoring experiences. They'll build chronologically ordered treks to score bonus points, while paying the time cost for each action taken. The player who earns the most points after three rounds of play will win the game. To set up, separate the game's four decks. All of the cards in the Ancestor deck are identical, but for the rest, shuffle each deck and place them face up like so. Lay out the main board, and place the Ancestors deck in the top left, and the Day 1 deck in the bottom left. Days 2 and 3 are placed off to the side for now. Then from right to left, deal cards from the top of the Day 1 deck to fill these 5 slots. Each player chooses a colour, taking its clock, one of its markers, and a crystal tank loaded with one time crystal. Leave your second marker in the box. This is used only with the Time Warps variant. Deal each player four of the large itinerary cards face down, returning any leftovers to the box. Then each player chooses one of their four itinerary cards to play face up for the first round, leaving the other three face down to the side for now. The first time you play, you can make this choice at random. The player markers are used for counting score and are placed at zero on the score track in any order. While the clocks represent time markers, and these are stacked in a random order on the 12 space of the time track. The order in which they're stacked will be your initial turn order, the first turn on top and the last turn on the bottom. Keep all of the different coloured experience tokens nearby, as well as the reference card which tells you what years you'll find on all of the different cards in the three decks. You're now ready to play. Trekking Through History is played in three rounds, each representing one day of travels that you'll take through history. As players take actions, they'll be moving their time markers around the clock track and each round ends after each player has made a complete lap of the clock. The game is played in turns without a set turn order. At any given time, it's the player whose clock is furthest behind on the clock track who takes a turn. So right now it would be Red's turn. Every turn involves moving your clock at least one step around the track. And so after every turn, you'll check this track again to see whose turn is next. If there is more than one player stacked in the furthest back position, then it's whosoever clock is on top of the stack who takes the next turn. And it is possible for a player to take consecutive turns. For example, it's currently Blue's turn, and if Blue only moves one or two steps on that turn, then Blue will take the next turn as well. Each turn is resolved in five steps. Choose a card, move your clock token, Collect your benefits, place the card in your trek, and then refill the cards. First is choose a card, and you'll choose any one of the seven face-up cards from the main board to serve as the event that you'll be visiting on this turn. There are no restrictions on which of the seven cards you may choose to take. Secondly, refer to the time cost on the card you've taken, which is this number in the bottom left corner and then advance your pocket watch that many steps clockwise around the time track. If you finish on the same space as another player, stack your marker on top. If you have any time crystals, then you may choose to spend them to reduce the time cost by one per crystal. So here, by spending one crystal, the cost of this would be three steps instead of four. This can only be done to a minimum time cost of one. Here, for example, spending two crystals to move one, but not spending three crystals to move zero. Put another way, you must always move your watch every time you take a turn. The third step is to collect benefits. 
refer to the bottom of the card and then gain the experience tokens matching what's shown. Also gain the benefit printed below the space from which you took the card. And note that neither the Ancestor Pile nor Draw Deck has this additional benefit. Add those experience tokens to the matching coloured columns of your itinerary board, filling each column from top to bottom. If you gain a card with a wild benefit, then you choose which column to place it in, again placing from top to bottom. If you cover a number of victory points, or cover the last space which is connected by a line to a number of victory points on the right hand side, then advance your scoring marker immediately. If you cover a crystal icon, or gain a card with a crystal benefit, then add those new crystals to your tank. If you gain a benefit but the matching column is full, then you simply discard that benefit. The fourth step is to place the card into your trek. For your first turn, you'll simply place it next to your itinerary board. For each subsequent card you've played, make a check. If this card is more recent than the card that preceded it, then simply add it to your existing trek. You'll be making a row of cards in chronological order. If your new card is earlier than the one you've most recently played, then you must start a new trek. Remove the cards from your existing trek and replace them with the new one you've taken. Then place your newly completed trek face down off to the side, making sure to keep each of your treks in some way separate from the others. Each of your treks will gain or lose points at the end of the game, depending on its length. You can always add Visit Your Ancestors to an existing trek, and you'll treat its year as matching the one before it. Finally, reset the board. If you took one of these five cards, slide all other cards over to the right as far as you can, and replenish off the top of the deck. Play continues with whoever is now furthest behind on the time track. In each round, you'll complete one lap of the time track. If you take a card which moves you exactly to the number 12 space, then you gain a punctuality bonus, which is three points added immediately to your score. If your action would take you past the number 12 space, then you simply stop on the number 12 space, adding yourself to the stack without gaining the bonus. Once all players reach 12, the round is over. Remove the current round's cards from the main board, and replace them with the cards from the next round. You'll now discard your itinerary card and all of the experience tokens that were on it. You only have until the end of that one round to score the points from this card. Then choose any one of the remaining itineraries which you were dealt at the start of the game to be your itinerary for the next round. You keep your active trek and will start being able to build onto it with cards from the next era on the next turn. And note that each subsequent round skews a little bit more recently than the one that preceded it, making this a good way of gaining long treks across the game. You'll now start the next round with the time track markers in the same order they arrived at the end of the previous. After three complete rounds of play, the game is over and proceed to final scoring. Gain or lose points for each of your treks, including the trek which was active at the end of the game. This player would gain 30 points for a 10 card trek, 4 points for a 4 card trek, and lose 3 for a 1 card trek. Then add 1 point for each left over time crystal. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, players compare their longest treks and longest trek wins. If still tied, players compare their second longest treks, then their third longest, and so on until the tie is broken. If still tied, victory is shared. Once you're familiar with the basic game, you can play with the Time Warps variant. To play with this, you'll use the Time Warps cards, and in setup, you'll shuffle and deal out three of these into a face-up stack. Each player will also take their second marker for this module. As part of round setup, move the top card from this stack into the centre of the clock. 
If the time warp card has a time cost, then on your turn, instead of taking a card from the main board as usual, you can instead place your second marker on this card and resolve the ability shown. Here it would be taking two green experience markers for a time cost of three. As with any other action, you can reduce the time cost by paying time crystals down to a minimum of one. Each player is allowed to take this action once for the round. Once you no longer have your secondary marker, you won't be able to take it again. If the card has the infinity icon, then it will have a passive effect which will be there throughout the round. And players do not need to place markers to resolve it. At the end of each round, remove the time walk card from the clock and replace it with the next one from the top of the deck. And that's how to play Trekking Through History. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us, you can also click the meeple in the corner to do that and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.